Exercise Promethean Ram is a brigade-level live fire exercise designed in part to prepare the 1st Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry for duty as Task Force 113. Well, today uh, we were uh, practicing our uh, combat team attacks. Uh, a combat team is actually a pretty powerful force uh, that the Army can put together. It's a gr tactical grouping of tanks, infantry, our artillery, and our, our engineers. And uh, once you put that together, it's, uh, it's a machine that can pretty much uh, take on, on anything that's thrown at it. Uh, right now, we're out training as part of uh, our, our preparations to become the uh, high readiness battle group uh, for the Government of Canada. Uh, we maintain expeditionary uh, battle group uh, every year in case the Government of Canada has some uh, contingency that needs to deploy us on. And uh, I'm, uh, my company represents uh, one third of the combat power for that. So uh, today, uh, we're just uh, kind of going through our paces, marrying up and getting used to uh, all the uh, different arms working together so we can work as a cohesive team and uh, basically bring all of our uh, combat power to bear, uh, wherever uh, can, the government can decide to send us. So in this case today, I mean, uh, it's your typical spring in, uh, in Wainwright. <laughs> Springtime in Wainwright, which does, have, does present its problems here. Yeah. What was it like here today? Um, it was definitely challenging. Uh, spring's always hard because you've got uh, snow to get stuck in. You've got uh, all the mud and the muck. Uh, but the, the good thing about the Canadian soldier is that no matter what's thrown ahead of him, he'll always drive forward. Uh, we proved that in, uh, through two world wars, Korea, Afghanistan, wherever you want. And uh, you know, it was kind of rough out here today, but it wasn't exactly Passchendaele. But basically, once uh, troops, uh, troops get their teeth sunk into something, they'll uh, plow through anything. C-19s down that road, you got guys, so they're not useful there, so let's position them somewhere else, okay? For a combat team, you have an infantry company that's about, uh, at full strength, it's about 140 uh, soldiers with uh, 15 of our lav armored vehicles. Uh, it's also got a tank squad of 19 uh, tanks, and uh, the government's uh, procured for us, and they're all coming online, the Leopard 2, which is probably the best main battle tank in the world. It provides our soldiers with outstanding protection and firepower. Uh, it's a battery of artillery usually in support, so six of our uh, M777s, uh, which again are one of the world's uh, best artillery pieces. Uh, and it's a uh, armored tr uh, troop of uh, combat engineers, uh, which do uh, a lot of our mobility stuff, so breaching minefields, opening up roads for us, and uh, searching the objective for any kinds of movie traps or of explosives. And uh, Brandon, again, um, when you put that all together, there's really nothing it can't tackle. It can take on uh, mounted offensive operations against the conventional enemy. It can uh, provide security uh, in a counterinsurgency. Uh, I can dismount my infantrymen. We can get in helicopters and go do uh, air mobile stuff. Really, it's, it's probably one of the most flexible combat groupings in the world and one of the most powerful. Task Force 113 will be available to the Government of Canada on short notice for full spectrum operations anywhere in the world for 12 months, beginning July 2013. Troop is just building a 12-story MGB across this gap. Uh, MGB stands for Medium Guru Bridge, and basically get through the river and let the tank drive across the river when they need to. Drive. This bridge is uh, like a field expedient bridge that we can put in in uh, about eight hours. So when the commander wants to cross the river, we hop in and basically build this bridge across the river. What's the maximum length of the bridge? Uh, maximum length can go up to uh, basically as much as you want. As long as we have more base to add into it, there is, there is basically not really a limit. But obviously as, as, as the bridge gets longer, there will be less weight you can put on it before it breaks. Average age of your troops here today? Uh, I'll say 24. How often do they get a chance to do something like this? Uh, not often. This is a really good training opportunity for them just to get out here and build a bridge over a, over a gap. So, yeah. Artillery, armor, engineer, infantry, tactical helicopter, and medical units are conducting individual training for the first half of April. During the last half of April, these units will come together to form a battle group and engage in scenario-based live fire exercises 24 hours a day. Our regiment's out here right now uh, as part of a uh, workup training for Task Force Gladius. Um, we are the uh, high readiness uh, unit for Western Canada that will be uh, getting ready for uh, any sort of uh, potential operations that the Canadian forces and uh, the Canadian government has uh, see in store for us in the near future. The uh, gun behind me is the uh, M777 uh, C1 howitzer. It's a 155mm howitzer. Uh, our uh, regiment has uh, eight of these. Our battery presently has six of the, uh, the guns. Uh, they are a uh, towed lightweight howitzer, which is designed to bring an uh, immense amount of firepower uh, quickly and efficiently to the uh, forward end where the infantry need the uh, support in order to uh, complete their attacks. Uh, 
Uh, this gun uh, with uh, specialized ammunition can uh, go upwards of uh, 30 kilometers. Uh, this kind of environment, particularly with the cold, always presents its challenges, particularly with such a complicated gun as, uh, as you see behind me. Uh, a lot of the parts are uh, sharp and metal, uh, which uh, combined with the cold can lead to personal injury. As, uh, as well as that, there is um, hydraulics on the, uh, the gun, which don't uh, always function the best with the cold. Uh, that being said, we have uh, trained uh, coming from Shiloh, Manitoba, where it is uh, very cold all year round. Uh, we have trained uh, very hard for the cold and are uh, very adept at keeping these uh, howitzers functioning. Uh, they enjoy the, uh, the challenge of it, to be honest. Uh, most of these, uh, these guys here behind me, they got, didn't get into the army just to uh, sit and uh, do nothing. They got into uh, to train hard, to make a difference, and to, uh, to do something that's outside of the norm. Okay, the route we're going to be taking uh, is going to be uh, down Blue Route to uh, White Route. It's going to be uh, deployment and uh, occupation. Second phase, the uh, contact with fire support ops. And uh, third phase is going to be uh, uh, it, It's a lifestyle choice. Uh, there's nothing quite like it. It's it's not just a job. It's it's more than a career. It's everything uh, everything all encompassing. It's family life. It's uh, it's your actual work experience. And uh, there's the guys that you work with on the job. It's very similar to uh, a lot of what you would get in uh, law enforcement or firefighting or other paramilitary type organizations. I don't consider being in the military a job. I consider it a vocation. And uh, most of our soldiers do too. It's it's a way of life that. Um, it, 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 it's hard to quantify uh, exactly why it, it's, it's so amazing, but you really you join a brother slash sisterhood of uh, people and you're, you're all, every day you wake up and you know that you're serving something greater than yourself. And for you know going through the mud and the muck and the cold and everything else and uh, the, the general dangers that soldiers face, and the reward and the payoff of knowing that you're serving one of the greatest countries on earth is uh, more than worth it. Approximately 1,900 soldiers, predominantly from Edmonton, Alberta and Shiloh, Manitoba, are taking part in the training exercise. In Wainwright, Alberta, this is Francois Arsenault for HD Indie News.